Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you very much. And we're asking that you will help us to have wisdom as we read your word even today in Jesus' name. We pray that you help every child to pay attention and to listen to the teaching of the word and you help everyone to be wise unto salvation and steadfastness in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Today we are going to study a very special passage of the Bible and it's found in 1 Kings chapter 13. 1 Kings chapter 13. In this chapter we find a story and it's a true story. It's not only an interesting story, it's a very instructive story. It's interesting because of the details. It's instructive because of the lessons we learn. But before I read the story, and before we go into the study of the story, there is a question we need to address. Why do we study stories in the Bible? Especially the stories in the Old Testament. Why do we study, read, learn from those stories of the Old Testament? In Romans chapter 15, Romans chapter 15, verse 4, it says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime, were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. It tells us there are stories written aforetime, that is, before this time. And it says, Whatever things we read in the Old Testament that were written before this time, they are reaching for our learning so that through the comfort and the patience of the scriptures we'll have hope. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 11. Now all these things happened unto them for examples and they are reaching for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. It tells us the things we read about in the Old Testament. We read them because they were supposed to be examples for us who are living at this time. Now you turn back to First Kings chapter 13. Very briefly, the story is this. There was a king, his name Jeroboam. He had already backslidden, and he was serving idols. Because he was a king, he had influenced other people to worship idols with him. Normally, God does not like idol worship. Therefore, he sent a prophet to prophesy and to warn the king. The prophet gave some signs, and those signs really took place. Then the king wanted to do havoc or hurt to that prophet. But the Lord performed a miracle. His signs dried up. Then the king began to beg and said, Please pray for me. The man of God prayed for him. His signs came back to normal. And then the king said, Come back home with me and eat, as well as drink. But the young prophet said, I cannot do that because I have the commandment of the Lord not to eat here, not to drink any water here. He said, I'll give you some reward. He said, no, I don't want it because the Lord doesn't want me to take anything. And so he went back. While going back, he stayed by the wayside. Before reaching home, he stopped. He wanted to rest. While resting, somebody came to him, that person, an old prophet. And then he deceived him. How did he deceive him? We'll read about that later. He told him a story. And it was a lie that he told him. 
This young prophet believed the lie and went back with that old prophet. And then something unexpected happened in the house of the old prophet. And something happened to the young prophet while going back on the way. I won't tell you that now. We'll read the rest from the story. We have four points we are talking about in the story that we are learning today. Number one, prophecy about a future young king. Number two, purity and power of the young prophet. Number three, the prophet's mistake, sin, and disobedience. Number four, punishment for the young prophet. Let's look at number one. Number one is the prophecy about a future young king. Please open your Bible to First Kings chapter 13. From verse 1. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus says the Lord, behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name, and upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. In verse 3, and he gave a sign that same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, shall be torn apart, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. The Lord had promoted Jeroboam before this time. He had given him part of the kingdom. And ten tribes in the land of Israel had been given to him so that he would rule over them. But then Jeroboam began to think. He said, I've got this gift. I've got this kingdom. What will I do? So that the people in these ten tribes will never go to Jerusalem and they will never go and worship there and never remember David, never remember Solomon, and never, re never remember the son of Solomon. So he said, I know what I will do. I will make idols for them, very near where they are living. And I will say, why are you going to trouble yourself? It will be too much for you to go to Jerusalem. Therefore stay here and worship here. Let's see that in false kings. Chapter 12, First Kings chapter 12, from verse 26. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now shall the kingdom return to the house of David. If these people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then shall the heart of these people turn again unto their Lord, even unto Rehoboam king of Judah, and they shall kill me, and go, go again to Rehoboam, the king of Judah. Wherefore, the king took counsel, and made two calves of gold, and said unto them, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up, of the land of Egypt, and he set the one in Bethel, and the other he put in Dan. You will see the method that this uh, bad, evil, ungrateful king used. He said they should not go to Jerusalem, the headquarters of the children of Israel, to go and worship there. Because if they go there, they will remember David, or the house of David. Therefore he made idols for them. There are people that try to do that today. They make a little shed. They rent a little maybe warehouse. Or they take a little shop. And then they come.
young people, they say, where do you say you are going? Oh, they say, I want to go for Bible study. Where? And then you say, I'm going to Bible study deeper life. And they said, but you are going to take one bus and take another bus before you get there. Why are you going to go that long distance? Look at the shop I have here. You can do the Bible study here. Is it not the same Bible? Is it not the same songbook? Is it not the same message? Are you not going to hear the same thing? If you get saved right there at the Bible study in deeper life, is it different from the salvation you are going to have here? And then they convince those young people. They say, you stay here and don't take all the trouble taking a boss and taking another boss. That's exactly what Jeroboam did. Jeroboam said, it's going to be too much trouble if you go all the way to Jerusalem. And so he said, I will do something for you. The important thing is to worship. What are the headquarters? Or here, the important thing, stay here, worship. And so he set idols for them. And he began to worship the idol. And it became a sin for the children of Israel. Now because of that sin, God sent a man of God, a preacher of the word, a servant of the Lord, to go to Jeroboam and tell him he had done something wrong. But in the prophecy, we find him saying about someone that will be born and called the name of that child Josiah. Look at it in verse 2, chapter 13, verse 2. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus saith the Lord, behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name. This prophet came, and in his prophecy, he mentioned the name of a child that had not even been born. That's how we know a true prophet. A true prophet is somebody that says something before it happens and then that thing was sent by the Lord and that thing actually eventually happens. What the man of God was saying is this idol worship one day will stop because a child will be born. And it is that child that will put an end to the idol worship in that place. When was that fulfilled? Many, many years after this prophecy, the uh, prophecy was fulfilled. Look at Second Kings chapter 22. Second Kings chapter 22, verse 1. Josiah was eight years old when it began to rain. And he reigned thirty and one years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jedida, the daughter of Adiah of Boscath. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, and walked in all the way of David, his father, and turned not aside to the right hand or to the left, according to the prophecy of this man of God, many years after this, that child was born, and his name was called Josiah. And this child began to do the right thing. In fact, the Bible says he did that which was right. Everything he did was the right thing. Then this child also did something very wonderful, very important. He said he should cleanse the house of the Lord. And then they discovered the word of God. As they read the word of God to him, he trembled at the word of God and he wanted to obey the word of God. Then he began to do what the prophet had prophesied that he will do. Let's now look at Second Kings chapter 23. Second Kings chapter 23. As you look at the whole chapter, you will see that Josiah began to cleanse the house of the Lord and he began to do what the Lord had said he will do. Now come to verse 15. 
chapter 23, verse 15. Moreover, the altar that was at Bethel, and the high place with Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin, had made both that altar and the high place, he break down and burnt the high place, and stamped it small to powder, and burnt the grove. And as Josiah turned himself, he saw, he spied the sepulchre that were there in the mount, and sent and took the bones out of the sepulchre, and burnt them upon the altar, and polluted it, according to the word of the Lord, which the man of God pro proclaimed, who proclaimed these words. And so you will see that God used this young, prof, uh, young king, Josiah, eventually to destroy idol worship and to cleanse the whole place. Now we learn a lesson from this. That even though Jeroboam was an old person and he had been doing this evil thing, God decided that it will be a child that will stop that idol worship. And today, we who are young people, we should learn a great lesson from this. We should learn that God can use us as God used Josiah. And we should not say that we're too young. The Lord can use us to cancel and to remove pollution or corruption or sin or evil from our society. In your school where you are, where you are schooling and in your community where you are living, the Lord can use you as he used little Josiah so that you will bring righteousness to your community and I believe you will do it in Jesus' name. Because Josiah was just eight years of age when he began to reign upon the people of Judah. And what the Lord had said he would do, he began to do. Let's see an example of a young person again that the Lord used in Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, This is Jeremiah talking now. And this is Jeremiah saying, The word of the Lord came unto him. And here is what the word of the Lord said unto him. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. That's exactly what happened in the case of Josiah. Before Josiah was born, prophecy had come out. Before he came into this world, the Lord had prepared a work for him to do. Many of us need to realize that. That we're not just in this world by accident. And you're not in the church here by accident. The Lord before you were even born at all, the Lord knew that you will be here. And the Lord already has an assignment for you that you will carry out. And when the assignment comes, and uh, maybe the Lord uses your school visitor, or your instructor, or the pastor, or anyone to say, can you do this? That's not uh, the pastor just wanting you to do it. That thing had been written down before you were even born. It happened to Josiah. It happened to Jeremiah. And they were both young. And here God said, Before I formed thee within your mother, before you were given birth to, I already knew you. And I sanctified you. That sanctification is not uh, when we get saved and then get sanctified. That word sanctification, you see sanctification has uh, two meanings. Uh, because many people, they do not realize that when we use one word, that one word may uh, mean two different things. For example, if I'm talking and I just say box. If I say box, somebody is sitting by you, see you sleeping, may put all the sand together and uh, punch your cheek. Because I said box. Because they thought I'm saying help me box him so that I can wake him up. Another person, if I say box, he may look around and say, well, is there a box around me here to carry? That's a different meaning, but the same word. You understand? Therefore, the same word sanctify. It means make holy. That's the one we get after salvation. 
but sanctify also means set apart that means you are set apart for example we set uh, the youth choir here apart for singing that means they are sanctified for singing and then we set some other people apart to teach they are sanctified or set apart for teaching but the sanctify you are familiar with is a sanctify of you are cleansed you are purified you are purged and then you have the second work of grace in your heart that's wonderful sanctification but in the case of jeremiah here the lord said i set you apart i sanctified you and then he said i ordained you that means i put you in place as a prophet to the nations then in verse 6 then said i ah lord god behold i cannot speak because of for i am a child he was still very young and yet the lord was speaking to him and the lord said i've set you apart this is what you are going to do but the lord said unto me say not that i am a child for thou shalt go to all that i shall send thee and whatsoever i command thee thou shalt speak I've given you the example of uh, two young people that the Lord set apart and they did something wonderfully great in the sight of the Lord. They served the Lord. Are there other young people like that in the Bible? Are there other people, young people like that in the Bible? Give me one. Again, Samuel. Samuel was very young. In fact, when the Lord called him, he had not yet known the Lord. When the Lord called him, he went to Eli. And then Eli eventually said, If you hear your name again, say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant hear it. Any other child in the Bible, young fellow in the Bible? Again, David. The Lord used David as well. We have talked about Josiah, we have talked about Jeremiah, about Samuel, about David, and there are others. And I believe the Lord will use you in such a way in Jesus' name. Now, let us see something about this young prophet that came from a Judah. Let's come back to 1 Kings chapter 13. We have seen the prophecy of this uh, young man of God. He said that the altar will be rent, that is, it will be torn, and the ashes will pour away. And so it was. Let us now see the purity and the power of the young prophet. I'm reading now from 1 Kings chapter 13, verse 4. And it came to pass, when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which he cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, lay hold on him. He wanted to arrest him. And therefore he pointed to the people that were standing on guard around him. He stretched out his hand and said, lay hold on him. Don't let him go. Look up here. Now, he didn't want to accept the word of God. He wanted to persecute. He wanted to punish this young man of God. He got angry. He was unhappy. He said, why should you come all the way from your place and come and tell me here that I'm an idol worshiper? Now I'm going to show you something. Lay hold on that man. Let me, let me teach him lesson. That you'll never come to me again and say, thus says the Lord. But now let us see what happened to him. The latter part of verse 4. And his hand, which he put forth against him, dried up so that he could not pull it in again to him that means he stretched out his hand like this one he said lay hold on him and then the hand just stayed there and when the hand stayed there the other people that saw him as his hand was still there they were afraid to touch that man because they were afraid that if we stretch out our hand to touch that man our hand may be like that so that everybody will be going around like this will not be able to pull down their hand and the hand will just be there now the king was in trouble and the man of god did he run away no he didn't run away because he had seen the power of the lord manifested the hand was still there and uh, now the king was the one that is going to rise was going to ask for prayer request that you must now help me look at now verse uh, 5 and the altar 
also was strange. And the ashes poured out from the altar, according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. The ashes poured down, and then the man of God knew that the Lord actually had confirmed the word that he spoke. Verse 6, And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God. He didn't say, Pray unto the Lord our God. Because he was an idol worshiper, he knew that the God of Israel, the God of heaven, was not his God. Therefore he said, Pray. Entreat now, plead for me, so that the Lord will, my hand may be restored to me again. And the man of God besought the Lord. He prayed unto the Lord, and the king's son was restored again to him again, because and became as it was before. The man of God here, we can see that he didn't have hatred in his heart. He didn't say, that's good for you. For me to pray for you, not in my life. You wanted to take me. You wanted to arrest me. Now your hand is dried up. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because your hand is going to remain like that. You know, some people, uh, if uh, somebody had been persecuting them, like a teacher in the school, persecuting them, saying that you deeper, 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 I will see how you are going to pass the examination here. And then that teacher becomes sick. If some people here, if they are not really Christians, they will say, ah, I said so, that's my head has caught that man. And uh, that man is now sick. Instead of praying for that teacher to get well, they will not pray. Or maybe if uh, somebody, you are living with somebody at home, and uh, it's, uh, maybe your cousin, uncle, or your guardian, and he's uh, fond of teaching you. And I say, this day now, he took uh, the weed. And he said, uh, why didn't you come back in time? I've been expecting you that you need to wash uh, this clothes and draw this water and uh, take this thing to the market and go and see this and go and see that. What have you been doing? And then he got angry. As he got angry now, he took a uh, stick and he said uh, he didn't know that there was something uh, like a table or the edge of, um, of something that is standing out. As he wanted to do work like that. See? Neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. Now, let's look up. You see, there are some young people, they say they are Christians, but they do not know that it is not every gift that we receive from people. For example, uh, so I, I had one day, there was uh, one young child, a uh, fellow, he was uh, talking and he was looking for scholarship by all means and he wrote to this one he wrote to that one he wrote to that one and then somebody asked him a question and said but you don't know these people you are writing to this scholarship whether they are selling alcohol or they are selling cigarette or they are stealing or they are robbers you don't know any of these people and you just want scholarship uh, just by any means ah uh, the fellow said let me tell you something if devil gives me scholarship to study, I will take it. Now, that sentence shows that that child does not understand that if the devil gives you a scholarship, it is not for free. He gives you that thing so that he can plunge you into evil. But this uh, man of God, he understood that the food coming from this idol worshiper, uh, the water coming from this idol worshiper, the help, the refreshment coming from this idol worshiper is, uh, is uh, mixed with idolatry. And because those idol worshippers of those olden days, they used to sacrifice their food to idol before they will eat and before they will give out. That's why the Lord had told him that you will not eat in that place. You will not drink water in that place because they always mix whatever they did with idol worship. And so, the man of God said, he will not receive that thing the king was offering unto him. Some of us young people, maybe you are very hungry. Maybe you are in real serious need. And then somebody is going to give you something. And you do not think about what they are giving you. You do not think from what source is this thing coming. 
Is this of God? Is this not of God? I'm a child of God. Will God be happy if I take this thing from this individual? Look at verse 8. And the man of God said unto the king, If thou wilt give me half thine house, I will not go in with thee, neither will I eat bread, nor drink water in this place. For so it was charged me by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the way that thou camest. He refused the gift of the idol worshiper. And we should refuse uh, the gift coming from the servants and the agents of Satan. Uh, sometimes uh, I'm surprised how some people beg. And if we're Christians, we shouldn't be begging like that. Sometimes you are a student, and then you see another student, and this student, you don't know how, she, how he's getting money. He just comes to the uh, school in the morning, and then as he's staying at the gate before the entrance of the class, he, he gives uh, five naira to this one, ten naira to this one, twenty naira to this one, and buys biscuits, and buys granules, and buys cook, buys everything. And all the other children, uh, they'll be saying, ah, Mom, I'm here, I'm here, remember me, remember me, don't forget me. And then you say you are a Christian, and then you also line up. And you say, I'm here too, I am Christian, but I don't mind if you give me some grand nuts, I don't mind if you give me some biscuits there. And then in the afternoon, the parents of uh, that child come to the school. And as they come, they tell the teacher, they say, where is our boy? Where is our boy? And uh, the teacher says, what's the matter? This boy stole 5,000 naira at home. And we want to get to him very quickly to know if he has finished spending the money. And then by the time they get there, he has already spent about uh, 2,000 naira buying biscuits, buying this. And now you realize that the biscuit you took, the granut you took, the coke you took, is uh, was bought by stolen mo with stolen money and now you say you are a christian already you have drunk the coke already you have eaten the biscuit and now you are hearing that the money was stolen that's why we christians we do not uh, you know go and beg all these unbelieving uh, people and uh, say give me something there give me something there because they are not working how did they get so much money that they are just throwing away and just spending like that Christians are very careful. There's another thing we learned over here. See, this man of God, the prophet coming from Judah, he had done wonderful miracle as a result of uh, what uh, he, the prayer he prayed. The hand of the king came back again, and then the king said, "See what you've done for me. You have healed me. You have helped me. I'm now going to reward you." The man said, "No." Because if he took anything from a man, it would be as if he was selling prayer. He had prayed, and now he wanted to take a reward or take money as a result of his prayer that had been answered. But Jesus had told us never, never to do that. Look at Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, verses 7 and 8. As ye go, preach, saying... The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Now this is important. Look at it very well. Freely ye have received. Freely watch. Freely give. Freely give. Therefore, if you see anybody that is uh, praying for people and taking money, that is false prophet. If you see anyone that says he's a prayer warrior, and then he calls people to come for prayer, and after praying for them, he will say, Ah, are you going like that? Don't you know that prayer warrior will eat? And uh, why didn't you bring a bag of rice? Why didn't you bring some beans? Why didn't you bring uh, some, even if it's ordinary mineral, you just came empty-handed, and here I am praying for you, and you are getting healed. What are you going to pay for uh, your healing? That's a false prophet. That will not be a man of God. You see, God had told that young prophet. He said, when you go there, don't eat there. Don't drink anything there. He was telling him, be separated from them. Don't join them. Don't be part of them. And uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Verse 14. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. 
that's the lesson God was teaching that young prophet. That those people in that city, they were idol worshippers. And they were unbelievers. They didn't believe in the true God, the living God of heaven. Therefore he said, be not unequally yoked together with those unbelievers. And then in verse 17, wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, says the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. The Lord said there, be ye separate. In our schools, there may be some uh, groups of uh, young people. They make juju, they have hard drugs, they inject themselves, they smoke Indian M. They do quite a lot of bad, bad things. They get behind uh, the class and then they may fight, they may begin to practice whether they call it judo or they call it uh, wrestling or they call it boxing, call it any other name. And uh, then they say, why don't you come and join us? And why don't you join us? Why don't you join that? You say, no, thank you very much. Uh, I have another group I am in already, the Christian group, and I cannot belong to those uh, two groups at the same time. You will stay with the people of God, with the children that are learning the word of God, who are doing the right thing. Or it may be that uh, you are out of school, and while you are out of school, one of these other girls may call you and say, uh, are you going back home? And you say, yes, uh-uh. There's a party going uh, on here. Have you not seen the signboard? They are going to have a party. Why are you going home? Well, I need to go home because I didn't even tell my parents I will keep late. Why do you have to tell your parents? Have you a little, little girl? Uh, so you are still like a slave. They hide you at home and box you at home and keep you at home. I didn't tell my parents to you. But I don't have to tell them, if I come back at 10 o'clock in the night, my parents already know that I'm not a little, little baby or girl anymore. Or you say, I'm sorry, I don't do anything like that. I still have to go back home and also go for lesson and do for, go for other things. But you see, those who do not understand, they will just wait with all those other children. But the Lord says, be ye separate. Be ye separate in Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs chapter 23. If you've never read this passage before, take out your Bible and mark it in your Bible. In Proverbs chapter 23, verses 6 and 7. Eat thou not the bread of him that has an evil eye. Neither desire thou his dainty meats, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, says he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. Now you can see the king had called that uh, young man. He said, come home with me and eat. But you see, he had a different heart. He was an idol worshiper. He didn't believe sound doctrine. He didn't believe the word of God. He didn't change. His life remained the same. And when you see people like that, who have not changed, who remain the same, and they're still saying, come and eat with us, and they're saying, we'll give you this, come to our party, birthday party, or any other kind of party, you'll say no. You see, this man of God, he took a stand, and he said he wasn't going to eat or drink there. In fact, he said, if you're going to give me up to half of everything you possess, I will not eat there, I will there because the Lord had told me not to eat nor to drink there. Let's come back now to First Kings chapter 13. First Kings chapter 13. We're looking at point number three. The prophet's mistake, sin, and disobedience. I'm reading to you from verse 11. First Kings 13, 11. Now, there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel. And his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. The words which he had spoken unto the king. Then they told them, they told also to their father. Here we find um, an old prophet in the city. This old prophet had been there. He never spoke against the idolatry of the king. Not only that, he even permitted his own children 
to go to that idol worship of the king. And his children had been there when the man of God came and spoke against the altar and against the king. And he came back home and they told their parents, uh, they told their father, the old prophet, they said, uh, do you know where we are coming from? We are coming from the idol worship ceremony of King Jeroboam. But something happened today. A stranger came, a young prophet came, and he pointed at the king. And he told him he was idol worshipper. And he told him that the altar will fall down. That young prophet was very bold and very courageous. We never saw anything like that before. And then they told him of the miracle that took place. That the king wanted to arrest him. And the hand of the king just dried up. And that young prophet, he really has power. He prayed and then the hand of the king came back. And the old prophet said, Do you know the way he took? So that I can follow him and then I can bring him back. Look at it now from verse 12. And their father said unto them, what way went he? For, the, for his sons had seen what way the man of God went, which came from Judah. And he said unto his sons, Saddle me the ass. So they saddled him the ass, and he rode thereon. And he went after the man of God, and found him sitting under an oak. And he said unto him, I doubt the man of God that came from Judah, and he said, I am. Here, you see what happened here. The man of God had walked, had served the Lord. And he was going back. Instead of going straight home, he sat by the wayside. He said, let me rest. See the much I have done for God today. See the great victory I had today. See the power manifestation that was revealed today. See the prophecy that I gave today. Let me now stay by the wayside and rest. Now it's always dangerous to rest before the work is finished. Before you get to the place you ought to go. That's the mistake this young prophet made. And then the old prophet just met him and said, Are you the one I'm looking for? Are you the one that just came to our town and you performed that great miracle? Are you the one that just spoke to the king? Yes, I am, he said. Then in verse 15, then he said unto him, Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee in this place. This is a place of idol worship. I cannot stay here with you. I cannot drink. I cannot eat with you here. For so it was said to me by the word of the Lord, Thou shalt eat no bread, nor drink water there, nor turn again by the way that thou camest. He told this uh, old prophet, he thought the old prophet was a reasonable man. He thought the old prophet was a faithful person that would listen to what the Lord had told him. And then once he told him, then the man was okay. If God has told you not to eat, I don't want to go against the Lord. Go your way. He thought that's what the man will say. Look at what the man said in verse 18. And he said unto him, I am a prophet also, as thou art. That's how they start when they are talking to you. They want, you know, a girl may look up here now. I'll read the rest of the verse later. A girl comes to you as a young sister. And here you are, you are praying. And the Lord had convinced you. You don't have all this jewelry, all this lipstick, all this uh, fingernail print, and all the palming and everything. And you're living as a real child of God. And then another person comes. They even be a school mistress, a teacher. And uh, says that a girl come here. Why is it that every time you come, you see all the other girls, the way they dress, and you see the way they farm, and I've been looking at you every time. How is it you are dressing like this? Oh, and you say, it's because by the grace of God, I'm a child of God. And the teacher will say, mm-hmm, and nod her head. And uh, you, what's your testimony? She will say, well, on this particular day, I had the gospel. I gave my life to the Lord. And the teacher will say, mm-hmm, that's all right. That's very good. And uh, what else? Then I read in the Bible how a Christian should behave, a Christian should dress. All right. And uh, so that's why I don't choose all those things. And then the teacher will say, young girl, that's wonderful. 
Do you know I'm born again also? Do you know I'm a child of God also? In fact, we're the same. The way you are told your testimony now that you are born again, that exactly the same way many, many years ago, when I was still in secondary school, I was born again. But all these ones you are saying, don't do this, don't do this, don't do that, in lots of do's and don'ts, all that is not necessary. Uh, trust me, I'm your teacher, and I'm a Christian like yourself. Therefore, it is not bad at all. But uh, then she will say, maybe you've gone to deeper life before. Are you going to deeper life? Yes, madam. I go to, ah, uh -huh, that's the problem. You know, those deeper life people, they read the whole Bible. They don't know that it's not everything you read. That you are still a young girl, you will not understand now. But the counsel I will give you, go to your mommy and take all the jewelry. Take everything. There is nothing wrong in it. And so the same thing, that's what this old prophet did. This old prophet told the young fellow and said, Ah, you say you are a prophet? How about me? Am I a trader? Am I not a prophet also? I'm a prophet also. And then in verse 18 said, And angels pay unto me by the word of the Lord. Did this man pray before he got on the ass? Did he pray? No, he never did any praying. But he now said, an angel appeared unto me and spoke to me, saying, Bring him back with thee unto thine house, and that he may eat bread and drink water. What's the last part of verse 18? Can you read it out for me? I read it. I see some of you, you are not looking at the Bible. The last part of verse 18. Read it out and let me hear. But he lied unto him. Is that a true prophet? No. A true prophet will not lie. He lied unto him. But unfortunately, the young prophet believed the lie. So in verse 19, he went back with him and did eat bread in his house and drank water. He disobeyed the Lord. Now, let us look at what the word of God says. Proverbs chapter 26. Proverbs 26. And in verse 25. When he speaketh fear, believe him not. For there are seven abominations in his heart. It says, when they talk very nicely, when they talk in a wonderful way, when they give so many testimonies, when they tell you, uh, don't dress like you are dressing. Uh, if you really want to be a Christian, I'm a Christian also. It says, when they talk very nicely, they talk gross good words, don't believe them. Because seven abominations are in their heart. Therefore, we as children of God, we should know what the word of God says. And we should stand by the word of God and we should not listen to any of those people that will make us go astray. Now, when you hear that somebody is, uh, you know, somebody is talking to you, and as this fellow is talking to you, he's trying to persuade you to disobey God, to go astray, and to do what is wrong. What are you supposed to do in Proverbs chapter 14? Proverbs chapter 14, verse 7. Go from the presence of a foolish man, when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. What this young prophet should have done, when the old prophet was telling the lie, when the old prophet was saying, Oh, an angel appeared to me. An angel told me to bring you back. When he perceived not the knowledge of truth on his lips, he should have left him. He should have gone away from him. Because it was a big lie that he told him. We too should be very careful. We shouldn't allow somebody that will say, I, too, I go to church. I too, I read the Bible. I too, I'm in the choir in our church. I too, I serve the Lord. I too, in fact, I've gone to seminary before. In fact, I'm a bishop. In fact, I'm this, I'm that. We shouldn't allow anybody like that to confuse us or to make us go astray. Now, those of you who are uh, getting to the last class in your secondary school, and then you eventually get to higher institution. In, a, in the higher institution, you'll find that there are many so-called Christian groups. This one will say we're a Christian group, this a name. That one will say we're this name. That one will say we're this name. Immediately you get into the uh, campus. 
Then you'll see the assignment. We're going to have missions week. We're going to have evangelism week. We're going to have a new students uh, fellowship. We're going to have this and going to have that. And you will see that many of them, they do not totally stand on the word of God. But they will come to you and say, oh, are you a Christian? Yes, you say, I'm a Christian. Ah, they say, you see, this campus, interdenominational, interfaith, interfellowship, interstudent body, everything, everything is together here. No doctrine here, no Bible here, only singing and praying and sharing together. Be very careful because that's like the old prophet has been there before you on that campus. He's been there before you and he will tell you quite a lot of things and say, don't worry. We know what it means to be a uh, Christian. Just follow our example and you'll be all right. If you follow the example, you'll not be all right. Let's see what happened to the young prophet now as he came back with the old prophet. In uh, First Kings chapter 13. First Kings chapter 13. Verse 20. And it came to pass, as they sat at the table, that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus says the Lord, for as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord, and hast as not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee, but camest back, and hast eaten bread and drunk water, in the place of the which the Lord did say to thee, Eat no bread, drink no water, thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulchre of thy fathers. They came back to eat. And while they were eating, surprisingly, the old prophet began to speak. And the old prophet said, young man, young prophet, hear what the Lord is saying. As you have disobeyed the word of the Lord, and you have come back to eat where he told you not to eat, to drink water where he told you not to drink water, your carcass, that means your dead body, will not come to the place where you came from. That means they will die by the road. The very surprising thing is that it was this same old prophet the Lord now spoke through to tell the young prophet that he will die. Why? Will God speak through the old prophet? Well, God did that in a special way so that the old prophet will know the great evil that he has done. That you went to tell this man a lie. You brought him back. Now for you to see the greatness of the evil that you have done, I will send you with the message of judgment unto the man. And so the Lord opened his mouth and he began to speak. Oh, you see, since he spoke like that, was he really a false prophet? Yes, he was a false prophet because he told a lie. A true prophet will not tell a lie. How can God send this word through a uh, false prophet? Very simple. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And the Lord uses whatever he wants to use at any time. Don't you remember? It was the cock crowing, ordinary uh, hen, ordinary cock that the Lord used in bringing to Peter's remembrance that he had gone astray. Now that uh, cock was not born again, but God still used that. Do you remember the ass of Balaam? How many of you have read of the ass of Balaam before? All right. The ass of Balaam was the ass born again and sanctified, baptized in the Holy Ghost. Tell me out loud. No, the ass was not born again because the ass cannot repent. That's animal. And yet, do you know that the ass spoke in tongues? He spoke the language of Balaam. And uh, Balaam had been going, and then he uh, pushed uh, Balaam by the wall. And Balaam beat that ass. And that ass began to speak in a language he never went to school to learn. And said, uh, Master Balaam, why are you beating me? And uh, Balaam answered and said, See how you have brought me to shame. And uh, the ass replied him again and said, Have I done like this before? 
And Balaam was not even surprised that the ass was talking. And uh, he said, you have not done that before, but if I had a sword in my hand, I would have killed you. And uh, he said, but uh, what have I done now? Is it my fault? Is it not because this and that? That ass that spoke to Balaam like that, was the ass born again? No, therefore this old prophet was not born again, was not a child of God, just like God used that ass or used the cock, that's the way he used the old uh, prophet. And the old prophet said, you will not come back safe to the place you came from. That is a lesson for us. You know, uh, when I was a teacher at school, uh, we, we had, a, we had a, a group of, I told you, uh, I think last week, we had a group of uh, young people. I was studying the Word of God. And then we had a boy, it was a co-educational school, boys and girls. And these, some of, some of the girls, they really loved the Lord. And uh, one of the girls, I gave the verse, Hosea chapter 8, uh, verse, verse 3. And uh, some of the girls, uh, they were being troubled by the boys. And these uh, boys will, you know, go and hold them, touch them, and pull their calf, and do all that. And they will say, no, I'm a child of God. I don't uh, want to do anything that is bad. Eventually, one of the girls backslid and started using jewelry. And started uh, going the way of the people of the world. Surprisingly, it was uh, one of the boys that had been troubling this girl, one of the boys that had been teasing them and saying that they shouldn't uh, remain righteous and holy, that went back to the girl and said, uh, you, you are backslidden. You are a black, you are a traitor. You. It's only that you are a girl, but you are like Judas Iscariot. And this girl began to cry. He, the unbeliever that had been teasing and torturing and one tempting them to go back after this girl backslid, it was that same unbeliever that God was now using to say, uh, you, you cannot pray anymore. You don't tell me that you are born again anymore. You are just like us now. And that girl cried, cried and cried until she came back and prayed again and thank God she, will, she was restored. And so you can see here, it was the same old prophet that now the uh, Lord used and brought the message to the young prophet. Look at verse 24. And when he gone, that is, they finished eating and drinking. A lion met him by the way and slew him, and his carcass, his dead body, was cast in the way. And the ass stood by it, and the lion also stood by the carcass. He died an untimely death because he disobeyed the Lord. That's a great lesson for us to learn here. Many times, some young people will say, Well, I've not stolen 5,000 naira. I've not um, gotten pregnant. I've not uh, done juju or anything. Only what I'm doing is a little thing. Just this little jewelry. Just uh, this little lie. Just this uh, little sin that I'm committing. And uh, I don't think uh, I'm not like the people that commit big, big sins. You see this uh, young prophet here, it was a little thing that he did. He came back, the Lord told him not to come back that way. And he ate in that idolatrous place, that was a little thing, and drank water, it wasn't even intoxicating beer. Ordinary water. But the Lord had told him, don't do that. And he did that, and then punishment came upon him. I pray that we will avoid the punishment from the Lord in Jesus' name. How do we avoid the punishment uh, from the Lord? By repenting. Ezekiel chapter 18. Ezekiel chapter 18. From verse 30. Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, says the Lord God. Repent on yourself from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Here the Lord said, if they didn't want the punishment or the ruin or the destruction, they should repent and turn from their iniquity. Verse 31, cast away from you. All your transgression, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dies, says the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live. 
What the Lord is uh, expecting you to do, if you are backslidden, if you have sinned, if you have not been born again, is that you will repent and you will say, O oh Lord, forgive me. I have done, I have done that which is evil. And we've learned a great lesson here that there are no small sins, small lie, white lie, little stealing, or little immorality. Or they will say, eh, I have not eh, actually got it, I have not got pregnant. This is only what I have done. There is no little sin. Every sin will be punished by the Lord. But the Lord is saying, repent. And when you repent, the Lord will forgive. Unfortunately, the younger prophet had no chance to repent. And as he had no chance to repent, you see what happened to him. He just died like that. Many years ago, there was a meeting in Ogun State. That's just the state uh, nearby here. And the uh, young people were brought together. And there was uh, a message given. It was a message of salvation. And this had happened. And as the young people were there, they were given the altar call. And they were told, repent today, stop sinning, and give your life to the Lord. And uh, in that meeting, there was a boy there who could have given his life to the Lord, but unfortunately, he didn't give his life to the Lord. And the following week, an accident happened, and that child died. He had the opportunity to repent. He didn't repent. He missed that opportunity. What a terrible thing that happened. I pray that in your own case, you will not miss the opportunity of repentance in Jesus' name. See this younger prophet. When that prophecy came out, that see what you have done, he could have left that food immediately. He could have gotten on, on his knees immediately saying, Oh God, I am sorry. I am sorry. I've done that which is wrong. Forgive me. He shouldn't have left that place. But he had that message and he just said, Well, I don't know whether that's true or not, whether it will happen or not. And then he went on the way. A lion met him and then destroyed him. But you can repent immediately now. And if you repent, the Lord will forgive you in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. If you have not been born again, this is the time to be born again. No boy, no girl going to the toilet now. We are here to pray. Go back. Remember Josiah, a small boy? The Lord prophesied about him. You also, as a young person, a boy and a or a girl, the Lord can use you even as your little child even now. You also see the purity and the power of that young prophet. Tell the Lord by his grace you will be pure, you will be holy, you will be righteous. Pray that the old prophet will not deceive you. The old teacher will not deceive you. The mistress at school will not deceive you. That you will not listen to the people that will say, and ah, that's a small thing, it doesn't matter. That's a small thing, it doesn't matter. That's a small thing, it doesn't matter. You will not listen to those people. You will stand on the word of God. If you have listened to the old prophet and they have deceived you to do wrong, to misbehave, to commit sin, repent now. Repent now.
The Lord is a merciful God. If you repent, the Lord will forgive you. And then promise the Lord that you will not listen to any old prophet again. You will not listen to any liar, any deceiver again. What you have learned here in the church, you will faithfully continue to obey. You will not allow any old prophet, old teacher, old fellow to deceive you. <laughs>